Good morning. Good morning. It is a great morning this Sunday morning. And it's good to see y'all sit down with me a little while. And I decided to get up close and personal. I put my iPad up close so you can see me good. I wish I could see y'all. What a crowd it would be. 69,000 people. That's mind boggling. Well, I had a verse pulled up that I like. Let me see if I can find it again. Yes, here it is. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. You know, I'm going to share some stuff with y'all that is just strange to me, really. And that's how a little old woman in New Albany, Indiana, could get a group of people listen to her talk. Now, that's, that's a miracle of God. So, anyhow, I'm up close and personal this morning. But I never knew that I would be able to share the love of Jesus to y'all. It's wonderful. I mean, Buddy and I traveled on the evangelistic field for 14 years, and we saw a lot of lives changed. But now I can give the word to so many people, and God has done so many miracles in my life, kiddos. And I, I you know, I did that little shout out for that guy at the yard sale. His name is Keith. And he, he, he walks and, and exercises down at the Y. So yesterday at his yard sale, we did a little short together, me and Keith. He said, now they went ahead and had, that was Friday. And he went ahead and had his again Saturday. He said, I tell you what, it was a mad house. He said, that little shout out did miracles for his yard sale. But he's a devoted Christian, does ministry work, goes to Northside Church where he invites everybody to come. And he told us that he just stays busy telling about the Lord. And I said, he has had a lot of miracles in his life, which he shared with us this morning. And I told him, I said, Keith, you need to get you a YouTube channel and tell about all the miracles in your life like I have done. Because a lot of miracles have happened in my life, true miracles. And he shared some of them with us, and I don't have time to repeat them all. But he says, and I find this to be true. I can just be walking around at Walmart or somewhere and say, hi, how are you? And I hear their life story. And he said, that's the way he is. And I tell you what that is. They sense the love coming from you and that you would be a good listener. And then you can encourage that person. You may never see them again. Probably won't. I mean, you're just like ships passing in the night. Never see them again. But you'd be surprised how many people need to hear somebody or have somebody listen to them and talk to them and pay them some attention, which I usually have time to do, and Keith does too because he's retired now. But he said his yard sale was an absolute fabulous success, and I'm happy for him. He said he, he got rid of a lot of stuff. <laughs> He told us about one guy that came at, I am going to tell you about this one. He said I could. He said he was up at 6.30 and hauling stuff out of his garage in boxes to put out front. And this guy stopped by at 6.30 when he was putting stuff out. Guy got out of his car and came over down a little hill to his yard sale. And on the box, it was a box of tools. And on the box, it said $5.00. And the man says, this box is just $5 for all these tools? He said, no, man, I'm, didn't you see what I'm doing? I'm just hauling them out, and I'll be laying them on the table and pricing them. He said, but it says $5. So if it says $5, that's what it is, $5. So I'll take them. So Keith said he leaned over to that box. He said he ripped off this $5 sign. He said, it don't say $5 now, does it? <laughs> I got to laugh about that. 
I said, no. He says, no, you know better than that. that I can't sell that whole box of tools for $5. <laughs> so the guy was okay with it, I guess. Keith didn't say. So anyway, <laughs> I thought that was funny. You do have to be careful about stuff like that. But he, it was early. I mean, he said the guy was there at 630 so we went to a lot of yard sales Friday, but James went to bluegrass and I went kitty cat shopping and got a lot of good toys for the, I got scratching poles and all kinds of things for those kids. And I'm gonna do a video for those little kitty cats, our new little fur babies. And the way uh, Miss Busy took them on is, it's a miracle, another miracle of God. She loves these little kitty cats. And one of them picked James to go sit with him, and the other one sits with me. We are blessed. We love them. So we thank you, Jesus, for these new little girls. I call mine Princess. He hasn't named his yet. Uh, he may call her Squeaky. I tell you, she's not too squeaky. But last night when we went to bed, both of them came to the bedroom door. Now, we have a no-cat bedroom. And meowing up a storm. They wanted to go to bed with us. And I got up and we have a little night light and I could see one of those little paws reaching out underneath the door as if she's going to reach in there and get us, bring us out. So I got up and I sprayed her with this little perfume bottle I got and she didn't care. She just started right underneath my feet and she's back in the bed and the other one's right behind her. So they got up in the bed with us and that little princess came over and you know what? That silly cat licked my face and kissed me smack in the mouth. Now, what do you do about a cat that kisses you smack in the mouth when you're trying to go to sleep? But she did. And I, James says, they can't stay in here. We have a no cat bedroom. So I got up and I said, honey, I'm going to go in the living room and hold them a while because they are babies. So I got up and they followed me every step of the way and I went and sat down in my easy chair. Both of them jumped up in my lap. So I sat there and hugged them and talked to them a while and told them, now we all gotta go to bed. Y'all go to bed and you gotta sleep and you gotta sleep in this other room. So they followed me down the hallway to the spare bedroom and I have an easy chair in there and a spare TV if I wanna watch it. If I don't wanna watch football, I don't have to. So I got my own TV, I'm blessed. So I went over and I put her, I picked one up and put her in the chair and I put the other in the chair, patted them. I said, now y'all go to sleep, it's nighttime. And this is the truth. I went on my bedroom, shut my door, never heard another word. The Lord helped me that night. I wonder if they understood everything I said. You know, you, off, you wonder how much do they understand? And But when I patted them and put them to bed in that easy chair that I use out in my TV room, I got all my scarves and my flowers in there. And I found this scarf this morning and this rose. I've wore this before, but I really like this one. And I like the way it hides my turkey neck. It looks a lot better. I do have a turkey neck. Well, I'm 90 years old. What do you expect? I'm doing good. <laughs> And kiddos, life gets tough. It really does sometimes. But the Lord will help you through it. I mean, I'm going to tell you something else. We went to that dinner, and it was good and everything. But the leader of the group, his name is Carl, and his wife's name is Ellen. And she developed their senior years like me and James. And Carl is a leader of the joy group that we have and Ellen got sick a few months ago and they discovered and she would tell me she said I just feel so weak all the time I feel so weak all the time and I just don't feel good there's something not right with my body and I don't know what it is and they found out that it was lung cancer she never smoked in her life or did anything but Carl got a call yesterday while we were in the meeting and this young woman was speaking. And so he went out of the room and he was gone all the rest of the time she was speaking. So when he came back and after she got done, he said, I will tell you that they don't hold out hope for her. She is now on a 
machined, you know, to make her breathe and unconscious. He says it won't be long. And so we prayed for him and for God to give him the strength and to give her a good home going because that's what's happening. And so, you know, we all going to die one of these days. And so we need to stay prayed up. That's what I call it, staying prayed up because we're not enough as perfect, you know. So when we make a mistake and do stuff that isn't pleasing to God, ask right away. He can hear you wherever you're at. Forgive me, Lord. Let me do better. I will do better. And make up your mind to do better. <laughs> we really have to work at uh, doing better and not doing wrong things or hurting people's feelings or anything like that. I don't, I don't aim to hurt anybody's feelings. But you know, I'm a very plain-spoken woman. And I'm going to tell you something else. I should not tell you, but I'm going to tell you. James and I was at a yard sale. And he saw these big African uh, carvings. Now, if there's something I don't like, it's big brown, big brown African carvings. And the black man had them for sale at a good price. So I just spent my opinion. I told James, I said, please don't buy them right in front of that guy. I said, I just don't care for stuff like that, and I really don't want them on my wall. They're okay, all right, for the right place, but I, I, so when we got in the car, James was, he, he turned right around, James did, and went right straight to the car. He never said a word. He was walking fast. So I just took my time, but I talked to the man standing there, and I said, you know, some people would really like them. And I love the gold necklaces. He had about three gold necklaces around his neck. I said, they're beautiful, but I just, you know, I just don't care for them. And so when we got in the car, James says, you don't have to tell everybody your opinion. Well, I've been telling people my opinions all my life. I said, well, honey, it wasn't an insult just because I don't care for them. I know other people, he bought them. I said, but he was getting rid of them, wasn't he? Now, isn't that a good point? They were ugly. I, I was afraid James would bring them home and hang them on my wall. Oh, Lord, I couldn't take that. Jesus, forgive me. I try not to use the Lord's name in vain, but that was a prayer. I was really praying, Lord, don't let him do it. But he buys crappy stuff all the time. You know what he did lately? He bought a cookie jar. He don't ever watch my, he don't watch these anymore. And I can talk about him behind his back. <laughs> it's not bad. I love him to pieces. He's wonderful. But he bought this cookie jar. It was a woman and it was her head. And it was, what, a foot and a half tall. And it was pretty. It was really pretty. And I thought it was all right if we could find a place to put it. You know where he put that thing? On top of the refrigerator. I never look up anyway, I'm so short, but I could see it. But what was irritating to me is every time I slammed the, or shut the refrigerator door, it rattled really loud, not quietly, rattled. And I told James, I said, what is, he has got some other stuff on top of the refrigerator. He's six foot three and he can put stuff up there and decorate. And he's got some pretty stuff up there that I don't object to. But that, and cookie jar was pretty. But that rattling every time I shut the refrigerator door, it sounded like something was going to fall over all the time. And I said, what in the world is that, James? I can't see it good enough to know what it is. He says, that's that cookie jar. I said, well, it sure is loud. And it, I said, tell you the truth, it aggravates me. So is there any way we can fix it? He said, I don't know. But the next day, guess what? It disappeared. I don't know where he took it, probably to his garage. <laughs> but he said, I'm going to tell you what, it was getting on my nerves too. Wasn't that sweet? But he's got some, he's got a horse up there now, a horse head leaning on, and it's really pretty. But like I say, I'm so short, I can't hardly see it anyway. But that jangling every time I closed the refrigerator door was getting on my nerves because I am into my refrigerator a lot. <laughs> So I've had fun this morning.
So now I'm going to watch my preacher. He's preaching up a storm, I'm sure. So I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Have a blessed day. I'm going to do it cross-eyed today. Love you. Bye-bye.